What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and you've probably heard the buzz surrounding the For The Win graphics cards here with their ACX 3.0 coolers, where there's actually an issue with the power delivery, and in some extreme cases, actually burning of components and failure of cards. So we're gonna talk about that today, but more importantly, I'm gonna tell you how to fix it, and the most important, what EVGA plans to do about it. Now the power delivery system here on the For The Win card, unfortunately, is not being actively cooled. There is no thermal pad that was installed between the power delivery and the base plate, allowing the ACX cooler to blow down on the base plate, giving more effective cooling to the power delivery. So what's happening here is the temperatures are getting much hotter than EVGA is comfortable with because it's putting the parts barely within tolerance. In some extreme cases, parts and boards are failing. So that's why you're hearing about this now because there is a plan in place to correct the issue here for all ACX 3.0 owners. Now this is only affecting the ACX 3.0 cards, not the ACX 2.0 and older. So that's like the 980 Ti and below. If you guys have one of those, it's not affecting you. It's also not affecting hybrid owners of the 10 series or anyone with a blower style card, just the ACX 3.0. But if you wanna learn more about this issue, head on over to Gamers Nexus. Steven Burke over there did a really good article about this. And he's also gonna be doing in-depth testing moving forward. Uh, so that he can also show you guys the problem, the fix, and how effective it really is. But not only that, he has a majestic man mane of hair. When he steps outside, the sunshine always seems to be having a ray of sunshine right on his head. It's glistening, and it's majestic. And, I, and whenever I see Steven, he's always moving in slow-mo, because his hair is just so damn fine. That wasn't that awkward, was it? Now, when issues like this arise is when a company either sinks or swims because problems happen all the time. If you've ever looked up technical service bulletins, you'd know that pretty much everything that's ever been manufactured has some sort of a flaw or defect that has to be addressed. So the fact that something came up is really not that alarming, but what really makes a difference is how a company handles it. Now, EBGA has, this is all comes from the top, from the CEO himself, that they stand by their product and they want to make sure that everyone is happy and satisfied. So they put an action plan into place and I'm really happy to see this because we've seen issues before and a lot of companies try and sweep them under the rug because there is guaranteed to be financial hit when stuff like this happens. Now the first thing you should do is go and download the new BIOS for your 1080 for the win cards. Now the new BIOS is gonna bump up your fan speed just a little bit. But if you've ever taken a look or listened of your For The Win card, it's dead silent anyway. And although the GPU is running very, very cool, the fans are also responsible for keeping power delivery cool as well. So the first and simplest fix at the sacrifice of a little bit of noise, we're only talking about 400 RPM of fan speed here, which is not much for the, the ACX cooler whatsoever. It's going to bring your temperatures down quite a bit on the VRMs before we even apply the second fix we're gonna talk about here. In fact, I even got a chance to head out to EVGA because they invited me over to show me what the problem was. I took a card without their fix and we were taking a look with thermal camera and thermal imaging, what the temperatures were like. And the VRMs were getting to 110 C, which is actually very, very hot. Um, but they also showed me with the fix applied, how much cooler it was and how much the temperatures were kept in check by simply adding a thermal pad. And trust me guys, they're learning their lesson here because what took a few cents per card to apply at the time of assembly being an oversight, because I asked them, why didn't you guys put this on there? It's on every single one of your cards in the past. Why did you fail to do this? Um, they admitted it was a mistake and it was an oversight and they learned a lot from this. So that uh, step number one would be download the new BIOS. The second fix is the application here of thermal pads for the power delivery system. Now the thermal pads are not only gonna work on the front of the card touching the base plate and the ACX cooler, it's also going to be utilizing the back plate as well, making it a functional back plate to help dissipate that, dissipate that heat. And I'm gonna show you today actually how to install that. If you are not comfortable with taking it apart, there's two things to mention here. One, they do offer a cross ship RMA for uh, registered owners of For The Win cards. So make sure you're registered, guys. It's important. Register your cards. It should always do that. That's how you get your warranties and stuff. But they are offering a cross ship where they will send you a card with the fix already applied and you send them yours. It's minimizing downtime. So you don't have to wait to send it in, have it applied and sent back. Um, but also too, if you try this yourself, and I asked, I asked the CEO himself, I said, what if someone tries to apply this and God forbid they accidentally damage their card, then what? Are they screwed? He said, no, they will still stand by the product. So that's huge. But anyway, if you're brave enough to try this yourself, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's go ahead and do it. So to do this, there's a few things you're gonna need. Obviously, you need your graphics card here. If you don't have a graphics card, you're not doing this, or at least you're not doing it right. You need your kit that comes from EVGA. I don't know what the packaging is gonna be like. This is the one they gave me when I was down there. 
Um, but in here you have your thermal pads. It's gonna be for both the base plate and the back plate. You have instructions, and then of course you have thermal compound, because you are gonna need to be able to put uh, thermal compound back on the GPU. Now in terms of tools, I'm just using a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screws. It's a magnetic tip, so I'm not gonna lose those. We need some isopropyl alcohol because we have to clean off the old thermal compound. And then of course, some paper towels. Uh, this is a pretty lint-free paper towel, but you guys can use coffee can filters or coffee filters, whatever, something that's lint-free. That way you're not gonna get lint all over there. Now, something else to mention here too is this fix also is being applied to uh, the SC cards, not just the For the Win, and the process is the same for all of those. So even though we're showing a For the Win model here, if you have a 1080 or 1070 super clocked, um, they're gonna be exactly the same process. So the first thing we have to do is take this thing apart. And this is the part that tends to freak out a lot of people. We're gonna take out the four screws that are surrounding the GPU first here. These are these spring-loaded screws. And do yourself a favor, get a white sheet of paper or do this on a light surface. Uh, Anti-static surface would be preferred, but uh, this wood table is perfectly fine. But as you can see, the screws are rolling all around. We don't wanna lose any of these. We wanna put this all back together as it's supposed to be. So make sure you get something to put these screws in, a little bowl, a little cup, something, so you don't lose them because these screws are pretty darn tiny. Those four screws, believe it or not, are the only screws that are actually holding on the main cooler. These other smaller screws here are just holding on the back plate and the base plate together like a sandwich, like an amazing sandwich of cooling. See, see how it just came apart with only those four screws removed? Now don't go yanking this apart because there are two wires you have to disconnect in here. There's gonna be one right here that's kind of coiled up, and then there's gonna be another one on the back side right here, which is for the LEDs and, and fans and such. Don't pull by the wires. Get either a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it out, or get your fingernails in there on the side like I am. Pry it out gently, kind of wiggle back and forth side to side, and then they will come out. But you cannot pull on the wires. The wires are very delicate, and you will end up damaging them and then, yeah, you don't wanna do that. But as you can see, that's what it looks like when it comes apart. So for now, we're gonna set this guy aside. We don't need him again for a little bit. We are gonna go ahead and clean off the GPU core right here. So this is where you need to take your isopropyl alcohol or your cleaning swabs, whichever you use. I'm, some brands make thermal compound cleaning swabs. So once you get that all nice and clean, you're gonna flip this over face down, and then we are gonna take out the remaining screws holding these two plates together. Because if you haven't realized already, there is a front plate right here that goes under the cooler. This is the part that's supposed to be dissipating the heat that is on the power delivery system, which is right under here. And then once you get the last screw out, the back plate will simply come off like this. As you can see, there is a couple thermal pads on there already making contact with the surrounding of the GPU socket right there. So there is some active cooling that's already taking place on here. We're gonna be adding a little bit more. So once your back plate is off, we're gonna be focusing here on the front plate. You don't need to take the front plate off. There's three screws here that hold that in. Leave those three in there and we are going to be applying the smaller or the thinner pad to the front of the base plate here. So what you wanna do here is take your pad take off the plastic and we're gonna go ahead and without making this stretch, cause sometimes they stretch when you pull them. So if you kind of pull it little by little like this and just sort of roll it off of there, then it won't stretch out too much and it won't hang off the sides. We are gonna go ahead and apply this right to the center of the components there that are visible. And again, you don't want it to extend beyond the length of the card. If it does, you're gonna have to cut it. And again, these things do like to stretch. So keep that in mind. There we go. I'm just gonna apply it like that. Once you do that, you're gonna set that aside and we're gonna go ahead and grab the back plate here. So now we're gonna take off the wide pad here. And just like before, we're gonna take off the hard plastic part. And we are going to apply this right here in between these four screws. Basically, we're covering the E and the V of EVGA. And this is already cut to length, so just find the spot where it doesn't overhang past the back plate. Kind of like I have it right there. Kind of firmly push it down in place. And then you can take off the uh, this plastic piece here. Just like so. There we go. There's gonna be a little bit of a bulge right there. That's quite all right, don't worry about it. Okay, and before we put it back together, we obviously have to put thermal paste 
on our GPU right there. Otherwise we're gonna have some serious temperature problems, more so than what we're already dealing with. So one thing to note is even though I am using a Swift Tech thermal uh, compound here, they're gonna be sending a squeeze tube compound of the exact same stuff that they use in the factory, which you can see right there. So yours is probably gonna look different than mine. So we're just gonna put a small drop of this right in the center, just like that. And I like to put just slightly more than I think I'm gonna need. I did a whole video on this. So you guys can go back and watch that. Remember I put a whole tube on there to show you what was what could happen and what will, won't happen. So you guys can revert to that if you think that's too much. Anyway, we do have to clean this one off as well. So take your isopropyl alcohol and your rag or paper towel, microfiber cloth, whatever you use, and then just kind of scrape that off and make sure you get all the leftover residue off of there. So once the compound is on there, we are going to go ahead and before we set this down, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the two little wires that we unplugged in the beginning. Because if you don't plug these in, then your fans aren't gonna work. And uh, again, temperature issues will arise. Different kinds of issues, worse, worser issues than what we're dealing with right now. But there's not a lot of slack on these wires. So be mindful of that before you go just cramming shit down, seriously. Now let's tip here when you go put this together, there's a little plastic nub right there that's gotta fit in that very top hole. The innuendos are strong with this one, guys, just deal with it. So anyway, make sure that that's put in there and then you will be able to get everything to line up properly. And then you're just gonna put together um, this in pretty much the reverse order of how we took it apart. We've already got our thermal pads applied to both the base plate as well as the back plate. So now we have active cooling all around and you have just basically done this fix yourself. So as you can see right here though, the thermal pad on the back plate is now gonna be touching all of the back of the power delivery. There's always a lot of discussion out there, right? Our back plates, do back plates really do anything? A lot of them are purely cosmetic, but in instances like this, it is going to be purely functional. So there you go, guys. That's how easy it is to apply the fix to the GTX 1080 for the win. But as I mentioned, this applies to all of the ACX 3.0 coolers, 1060, 1070, 1080 for the win, SC, all of those. So head over to evga.com, download the new BIOS. That's gonna be an immediate fix you can apply now. It's gonna bump up the RPMs just a little bit on your fan. Uh, it's gonna do it automatically. If you have a custom fan curve already, it probably isn't going to make a huge difference to you. But the temperatures do significantly decrease on the back back of the PWM circuit uh, just by bumping up the fan speed about 400 RPM. And EVGA was demonstrating this to me. They had a setup going where it was running Furmark on two identical setups, two 1080 for the winds, one with the fix applied with the back plate on, and one with the back plate off and the fix not applied. And without the back plate on there, it was actually giving a little bit better thermal dissipation there because there was no, no insulation happening with the back plate. And there was a massive delta in difference in temperature between both of the cards. A simple fix like this uh, is, is unfortunately caused EVGA a huge headache, but they're handling it the right way. And like I said, this comes from the CEO. They are devoted to the customer and this is completely independent. This is, this is not a PR message that they've asked me to tell you guys. In fact, I reached out to EVGA first and was like, what is going on? Give me the details. I wanna know what's happening here. Um, so that's when I decided to go down there and see it firsthand. And uh, I, I am thoroughly, uh, happy with the way that they are handling this. It's a little bit of a headache if you have to send in your card and, and get a cross ship or the fact that you even you know would have to do this. But again, they are doing this all out of devotion to the community because EVGA was founded on gaming and they know that gamers are very passionate about this and they want to make sure that everybody is happy. So anyway, even though there are instructions that come with the kit, sometimes people learn easier by watching someone do it. So that's why I decided to do this video where I showed you applying the new thermal pads. And you guys were pounding my inbox, literally, every single day, hour on hour, asking me why I wasn't talking about this. Well, I like to wait until I get all the details, and uh, I'm glad I waited because EVGA has made a statement, and uh, kudos to them for at least admitting they made a mistake, and they're correcting it. Anyway, guys, what do you guys think about all of this? Do you think EVGA is handling it the right way? Um, I think they are. But uh, again, what you guys think as customers are ultimately would make the most difference in all of this. Not what I think, but what you guys all think as a collective. So sound off in the comments or on Twitter and let me know what you guys think. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.